Here is an interesting challenge where you need to determine the relationship between family members. Amin is Baska's sister. Catherine is Baska's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Alan is Dan's mother. You need to determine how Amin is related to Dan. And you have four different choices. Choice A, grandfather. Choice B, grandmother. Choice C, daughter. And choice D, granddaughter. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can navigate in this puzzle and get to the correct solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward, reveal the answer to you, and explain how I got to the solution. And as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. The easiest way to determine this multi-generational relationship in the family is to build a diagram. Let's do it one step at a time. I mean, is Baska's sister. Catherine is Baska's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Ellen is Dan's mother. Now let's look at the conclusions we can draw from this diagram. I mean, and Baska are Catherine's children. Since Dan is Catherine's father, I mean, and Baska are Dan's grandkids. Which means that I mean is Dan's granddaughter. So the correct choice here is choice D, granddaughter. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to diagram and solve similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting problem where you need to count the number of squares in the presented shape. The correct number is one of four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 14. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can come up with the right solution. I was really impressed, but there are 18 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 and 18. Do you see any additional ones? It is totally possible that I missed one of the squares. And if you do see any additional ones, please make sure to post them in comments. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You are presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside. And small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence. And you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a tricky question which tests your knowledge of English words. You need to identify all the words that are synonyms to the word large. You're presented with 10 different words. Enormous, petite, insignificant, mammoth, minuscule, colossal, huge, powdered, gigantic, and dissolved. The tricky part here is that there could be between 1 and 10 answers. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can process the question. 
Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. But obviously, if you have better solutions, feel free to share in comments. I found five words that are similar in meaning to the word large. Let me share them all with you. The words enormous, mammoth, colossal, huge, and gigantic are similar in definitions to the word large. Enormous means very large in size. Mammoth means huge. Colossal means extremely large, as well as the word huge has a similar meaning of extremely large. And then finally, the word gigantic means item of a very large size. And finally, something you may or may not know. Practicing questions like this not just helps you increase your English dictionary, but also increases your IQ. And now, here's the question for you to try your skills. You need to determine how many triangles are shown on the screen. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 14. Feel free to pause this video to calculate the right answer. And make sure to post your solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is a puzzling question which has a very surprising solution. You're presented with three circles. Each circle is broken into three equal parts. The first circle has numbers 8, 19, and 13. Second circle has numbers 11, 15, and 29. And then the third circle has numbers 33, 31, and then one number is missing. You need to calculate the missing number out of four different choices. Choice A. 16, choice B 17, choice C 18, and then choice D 20. Did you calculate the right answer? As I mentioned, the solution to this problem is really interesting. So let's move forward to get to the correct solution together. You're probably tired hearing this and I'm tired repeating it, but you need to always look for patterns to solve these types of problems. And the pattern here is that section three of the circle is calculated as sections 1 plus 2 divided by 4. So to calculate the missing number, you need to add 33 plus 31 and then divide the sum by 4 and you will get to the result, which would be 16. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tricky question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I love this question because it truly makes you think to determine the final answer. You need to determine which number has the lowest value, and you have four different choices. Choice A, one third plus 0 0.4. Choice B, one plus 2.1. Choice C, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.31. And choice D, six tenth. Give yourself a few seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. The tricky part here is that the question is designed to make you do a mental math. To get to the final answer, you need to simplify all the options. For example, option A, 1 third plus 0 0.4 equals 0 0.33 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.73. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1 equals 3.1. Choice C, 0 0.20 plus 0 0.31 equals 0 0.51. And choice D, 6 tenths equals 0 0.6. Which means, if you look at the answers, that option C has the smallest value of 0 0.51, followed by option D, A, and B. Was it challenging for you? Please share your thoughts and suggestions on how to better solve it in comments. Very frequently, you might get tested on how quickly you can form the words using letters of the English alphabet. In our case, you're presented with nine letters and you need to form the word using all the letters only once. The letters are R, E, P, X, E, T, E, S, I. Do you see the word? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can answer the question. Ready or not, I am going to reveal the answer, which is the word expertise. And the definition of expertise is an exceptionally high level of skills, knowledge, or performance 
in a particular task or within a given domain. To better solve these types of challenges, try to look at the presented letters and try to form the word. For example, if you start in the middle and go EX, PER, TISE, you can definitely form the word expertise. Here is an interesting question where you present it with the set of numbers and you need to determine which number is not a prime number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 31. Choice B, 61. Choice C, 71. And choice D, 91. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe recall the definition of prime numbers and see if you can come up with the solution. Did you solve it? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's start with the definition of prime number. Prime numbers cannot be divided by any number other than one and number itself without leaving a remainder. Some examples of prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and you can continue the chain. The opposite of prime numbers are composite numbers, and examples of those would be 4, could be divided by 2, 6, could be divided by 2 and 3, 8, which could be divided by 2 and 4, 9, 10, and you can continue the sequence. As you might have figured out, out of the numbers presented, 91 can be divisible by 7. So, 91 is not a prime number, which means that the correct solution is choice D, 91. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the famous four triangle question you regularly observe in the test. You need to calculate the missing number, which is represented by the question mark. And you're presented with four different triangles. Each triangle is of a different color. The first bottom left corner blue triangle has numbers in the corners 2, 2, and 6. The green triangle next to it in the upper right corner has numbers 4, 3, and 1. The purple triangle in the bottom left corner has numbers 3, 5, and 2. And then the last triangle, black triangle, has numbers 0, 1, and then in the upper corner there is a missing number which you need to calculate based on the four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Do you see the answer? Let me give you a hint. There is a true calculation and not guessing behind determining what the number is. <laughs> Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution to you. As I mentioned, the trick about this problem is that the number can be calculated and the key to calculate it is to determine the pattern. And then the pattern here is that the numbers in the corresponding corners of the triangles all add up to 10. Let's do the math and start with the bottom left corner. 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 10. Let's go to the bottom right corner of the triangle. 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 0 is also 10. And now, in the same way, let's do the math and calculate the missing number. 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus question mark equals 10. Based on these calculations, question mark equals 1. So the correct choice here is choice B, 1. Keep in mind that sometimes, in these types of problems, triangles are colored, and the only reason this is done is to confuse you to look for the patterns inside the triangles itself. I truly hope that you've nailed this question on your own or learned how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the interesting question where you need to calculate the missing number. You're presented with numbers 11, 44, 99, and you need to continue the sequence and determine the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 111. Choice B, 133. Choice C, 155. And choice D, 176. Do you think you know the answer? 
give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the answer to you as well as the calculations. And in fact, the solution for this problem is rather simple. You just need some creativity and energy to get it solved. My advice to you, always look for patterns. Let's look at the pattern for this particular question. The way first three numbers are calculated is by multiplying the single digits incrementally. For example, the first number is 1 multiplied by 11, which is 11. The second number is 2 multiplied by 22, which equals 44. The third number is 3 multiplied by 33, which equals 99. So the missing number can be calculated as 4 multiplied by 44, which equals 176. So the correct choice here is choice D, 176. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with triangle, which is broken down into three equal horizontal parts. On the left side of the triangle, you see numbers 8, 4, and 3 if you go from the bottom to the top. And on the right side of the triangles, you see numbers 2, 6, and 1 number is missing. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 7. And choice D, 2. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured out the solution, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is the frequently used question to test how logical are you. You need to determine if conclusion is correct based on the statements. Let's look at the statement. All soccer players are sports persons and all sports persons are fit. Conclusion. Some soccer players are not fit and you need to determine if this particular conclusion is correct. You have four different choices to determine if conclusion is accurate. Choice A. It's reasonably correct. Choice B. It is correct. Choice C. It's incorrect. And choice D. Cannot be determined based on the information available. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and take another look at the statements and at the question itself. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution. As you might be well aware, in logical world, there is a formula. If A equals B and B equals C, then you can reasonably conclude that A equals C as well. We can look at our original statements as A, B and C. For example, the statement all soccer players are sports persons could be an equivalent of A equal B and then all sports persons are fit could be B equal C. Based on these two statements, we can reasonably say that A equals C, which would mean that all soccer players are fit. Our question though asks us if some soccer players are not fit. Do you think it is correct? Based on the information provided, it is not correct. So the correct choice here is choice C, incorrect. Because the correct answer based on the information we have is all soccer players are fit. Do you have a better way to solve this question? Please make sure to share in comments. And if you're trying to get ready for the test, and need additional questions to practice, please make sure to check out additional materials in the description section of this video. Let's look at the question where you need to come up with the logical conclusion. Oxygen is a gas. This tank contains gas. Conclusion that was drawn based on these two statements is that this tank contains oxygen. You need to determine if this conclusion is correct and your choices are Choice A, true. Choice B, most likely true. Choice C, false. And choice D, cannot determine. Do you see the answer? Question is definitely worded very tricky, but the answer is very obvious. Let's look into details. Obviously, there are many different types of gases. For example, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and a lot of others. Oxygen is just one of many gases, which is clearly indicated in the statement 1. 
and tank contains a gas, which could be one of many gases, which is shown in the statement too. Based on this, there is not enough information to determine what type of gas is stored in the tank. So the correct choice here is choice D, cannot determine. Did you come up with the same conclusion? Please share your thoughts in comments. Here is the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is one of my favorite questions where you need to determine the next number in the sequence. You are presented with four rectangles. Each rectangle contains letters. There are four letters in each rectangle. Three rectangles contain letters. And you need to determine the letters in the fourth rectangle. What's interesting is that the upper row of the letters is bold. And the lower row of the letters in the rectangles is the regular font. You need to determine item that comes next in the sequence. And you're presented with the four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can determine the answer. As I mentioned, this is one of my most favorite questions. Let's move forward so I can share the solution with you. To answer this question correctly, you need to know letters of the English alphabet, as well as you need to know a little bit of the math. And my advice to you, always look for patterns, because you would need the pattern to solve this question. So let's first look at the pattern. As you might have guessed, letters of the English alphabet are incremented here by the certain number. Increment number is different for each section of the rectangle. And the decryption key, if you're familiar with encryption and decryption, is 1, 2, 3, and 7. Let's look into details. Let's start with the upper left corner of the rectangle. And look at the existing sequence. You see that the letters are B, C, D, and they match to English alphabet one to one. So the next letter would be E. And it, but if you look at the set of answers, choices A, B, and C all have letter E in the upper left corner. Now let's look at the upper right corner of the rectangles. And then you see that in the main sequence, the letters are I, K, and M. And if you know English alphabet, H, I, J, which is missing K, L, next is M, and O, which means that the increment is 2, which matches the second number in our decryption key. If we look at the answer, we already know that the correct choice here is choice A, because the upper row letters are E and O only in this choice. But the question is done in such way that you can continue the logic and determine decryption key for the bottom row as well. If you're interested, bottom left corner, we have three number differences in the second row, and the correct choice here would be choice B. And in the bottom right corner, there is a seven number increment, and the correct letter choice here would be choice V. So as I already mentioned, the correct choice here is choice A. Hopefully you've learned something and now not just know how to answer similar problems on the test, but also learned about simple encryption and decryption logic you can use with the letters of the alphabet. Here's an interesting question from the recent test. You need to figure out the word from the five letters you see on the screen. The letters are H, A, B, E, and C. Do you see the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. You can pause this video to see if you can figure it out on your own. 
Make sure to use all the letters and make sure to use each of the letters once. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and share with you my solution. But keep in mind that a lot of times multiple words can be formed. So if you see another word, please make sure to share it in comments. The solution I found is the word beach. Let me spell it for you. B E A C H. Do you see any other solutions? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you'd like to improve your ability to guess the words, you can play word games, read a lot, and practice crosswords and puzzles. Here is an interesting question where you need to determine Dice's number at the bottom. Dice was rolled twice, and Dice's numbers have been captured in snapshots 1 and 2, with numbers 1 and 6 at the top. The dice was rolled again. You need to determine the number at the dice's bottom, if number 5 is currently at the top. You have four different choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 3. Choice D, 6. Do you see the answer? Please take a close look because the answer may not be obvious. Maybe pause this video to give yourself a little bit of time to find the solution. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's take a close look at the DICE's snapshots. Based on both snapshots, we can learn that numbers 4, 1, 3 and 6 are all adjacent to number 2. Because DICE only has 6 sides and corresponding 6 numbers, based on the two snapshots, we can determine that 5 must lie opposite of number 2. This is why if 5 is at the top, then 2 must be at the bottom. Did you figure it out on your own? Please share your thoughts and the way you solve this challenge in the comment section of this video. Would you like to try your own skills now to see how well you can solve the challenge? This is your opportunity to find the next number in the sequence. You are presented with three different numbers, 33, 55, 77 and one number is missing. You have four different choices to select the solution. Choice A, 97, choice B, 99, choice C, 105 and choice D, 107. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can solve this challenge. And once you're ready, make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's a cool question you frequently see on the test. You need to calculate the question mark. And you're presented with the three layer pyramid. On the bottom layer, you have numbers 8 and 2. On the middle layer, you have numbers 4 and 6. And in the top layer, you have numbers 3. And on the other side of the pyramid, you have a question mark. And this question mark can be one of those four values. Your choice A is 6. Choice B is 10. Choice C is 7. And choice D is 2. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. For some of you, this type of question might be easy. But for some of you, it might require some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out, the key to solve these types of challenges is always look for patterns. And if you look closely, each row adds up to 10. And vertically, values also add up to 15. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the interesting challenge you might frequently see on the test. You need to determine minimum time for people to cross the bridge. Every person moves at individual speed and four people can cross the bridge in different durations. They can cross it in 3, 7, 13 and 17 minutes respectively. The trick here is that only two people can cross the bridge at the same time. You need to determine what is the minimum time for four people to cross the bridge. 
you are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 17 minutes. Choice B, 20 minutes. Choice C, 34 minutes. And choice D, 12 minutes. Are you ready for the challenge? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As you might have determined, certain sequence provides the best efficiency for travelers to cross the bridge. Let's give each traveler the number. Based on the speed, this person can cross the bridge. We will first send number 17 and 7 at the same time to cross the bridge. After 7 minutes, number 7 finished crossing the bridge. And number 17 needs additional 10 minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number 13. After additional 10 minutes, number 17 reaches the finish line and number 13 needs 3 more minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number 3. Both number 3 and number 13 reach destination at the same time after additional 3 minutes. And total time it took for travelers to cross the bridge would be 7 plus 10 plus 3 equals 20 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice B, 20 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.